Howdy folks, good evening. How are we all doing? It is Saturday, September 11th, 2021. And before I start this video, I want to provide a commemoration for 9-11. Even though I personally do not remember it, since I was only two years old, I still want to give the recognition for the first responders during that event, which included policemen, firemen, and even medical teams. So, those people, even though they may be taken for granted, they help save people's lives. And I also want to send my regards to any families that have lost their loved ones during that day 20 years ago. So, that's how I want to start the video by providing that recognition. So thank you, all of you, who do work as first responders. If it weren't for you guys, the country would not keep going. So thank you. So, now, going into the video, I actually want to provide a shout out to one of my greatest friends and my mentor, Garrett Stewart, who currently leads the Eco Preservation Project in the Southwest Florida area. Now, as part of his nonprofit, he likes to provide services for our ecosystem, and in exchange for what he receives in terms of donations, he provides environmental education to the next generation. So, as part of this video, you guys may notice that underneath the dock here, you may see those four separate units right there. Some of you may be wondering what those are. For those of you who don't know, those are known as artificial mini reefs. And... What's fascinating about these is it was created by the founder of Ocean Habitats, which is a limited liability corporation based in Florida. Now, cannot remember his name right off the top of my head, but I'll be sure to give him credit because he was the one during his college years he created that model of the artificial mini reef and it's been proven to actually act as a mini reef, as in a coral reef. And they are indeed university proven, so they are effective indeed. Now Garrett basically has a partnership with Ocean Habitats to help install them in parts of southwest Florida and oftentimes he'll install them under docks whether it be for restaurants which is where I am right now I'm actually over visiting Spanish Point near Osprey and actually the reason I'm here is shout out actually to my older brother Skyler and my sister-in-law Kaylee the Lazy Daisies they have a show right now. So I'm just supporting some family. But the point is, the artificial mini reef installs are accepted even at private residencies too, for those who, who do have docks. And even if you don't live in Florida, you can also even place donations among Garrett Stewart's website of the Eco Preservation Project. It's just an excellent way to know that you are helping to make a difference. Now, generally speaking, these artificial mini reefs are built completely out of polypropylene, which is basically propylene combined with polymers. So it's just it's a bit of a chemistry 
type of thing, but the bottom line is polypropylene is a type of plastic, but it's considered to be a safer type of plastic. Now, oftentimes polypropylene doesn't burn as easily and it's actually sort of a waxy uh, covering on the material. And these artificial mini reefs also have PVC pipes incorporated. These PVC pipes allow water to basically, well, it allows the units to have buoyancy in the water. But basically what these artificial mini reefs provide for us is since I mentioned they act as mini coral reefs, they host a variety of crabs, up to 300 crabs each month, and even all kinds of fishes that reside in these types of waters, whether it be red drum and not like the reference from The Shining, uh, mullet, tarpon, snook, and even mangrove snappers. They treat those as little, as little sanctuaries, little hideouts. And even as I said, they host up to 300 different types of crabs, too, as like a nursery. Because in a way, they kind of imitate a mangrove, mangrove prop root system and now this is where it gets really interesting these artificial mini reefs actually have something called tunicates tunicates basically refer to marine organisms that are initially start off as vertebrates but then they become invertebrates so in a way they metamorphose during their lifetime it's actually really cool, by the way. And in a sense, tunicates are a bit related to us based on various reasons. So earlier in their lives, they actually do have a head, just as we do. And they also have a notochord, which basically describes a skeletal structure that allows their body to have stability. And... They also have ner nerves, like nerve cords, just as we do. But this is where it gets interesting. As they find a spot to anchor, they become sessile, which basically means that they don't move. They stay stationary. And oftentimes, this is where that metamorphosis occurs. These, well, the specific groups of tunicates that I'm talking about are ascidians. But once they anchor to where they want to be, they'll change and they'll become invertebrates. And as a point in fact, they'll actually consume their own brain so that they can have a source of food just to start off. I mean, isn't that, isn't that amazing or what? They eat their own brains. <laughs> like I guess in a human morality standpoint, we would never do something like that. But it's just remarkable that these Assidians, what they'll do once they're established, they basically feed on the phosphates and the nitrates that really exacerbate the red tide, the harmful algal bloom that is present in Florida. So they're like the, they kind of act like the ecosystem engineers in the water. I mean, they're just, they're taken so for granted, I think. And yet, what they provide in the long term is absolutely worth it.
But yeah, each artificial mini reef, they filter up to 30,000 gallons of water each day. I mean, it's a lot of water. That's just one unit. So this has four units under this dock. So that means up to 120,000 gallons of water is filtered each day. This is remarkable. Now, with that being said, oftentimes for installment, it's a little over $300 but then there is an additional fee for installment if you want to have one of your own or to purchase one for someone else as a gift. But yeah, just uh, Garrett through the Eco Preservation Project and Ocean Habitats, they really have a good system going on. Because it's like the more we have of these, our waters will become even better. But yeah, the artificial mini reefs in general are very useful, especially for brackish or salt water. But if you have a freshwater type of community, you wanna use a fish crib. So yeah, that's all I really have for you guys on that subject. So Garrett, this goes to you. I know that I have been a bit busy, you know, with work especially, but I do promise that I will still continue to work with you to help install these in the future, of course. And, of course, I hope we see each other real soon, too. <laughs> yeah. Just grateful to uh, also be contributing to help make a difference as well. But... None of this work goes to credit to me because I'm not the creator of this product. But as I said, I hope you guys really learned something of value in this video, like what these provide for us and how they make a difference. And yeah, I mean, so I hope you guys really get to read up a bit further on them if you're interested. As I said, I will be sure to include a link as well. And actually, I did have to be humble, of course. I did have the pleasure of being with Garrett and a mutual friend of ours, Joshua, back in July when we went to Pelican Alley Restaurant, which was one of the first businesses to help purchase these reefs instead of just private residencies. So now it's becoming public. It's awesome. Just glad to be also included in his journey. <laughs> so all right, you guys. Hope you enjoy your Saturday. And once again, Journey on a Journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya.